Hey everyone, welcome to Ms. Hollywood. Uh, Good Christian Bells premieres this Sunday, March 4th, but I have an early scoop now um, with one of the stars from the show. You may have seen him in CBS's Hawaii Five-0, Hot in Cleveland, Lone Star, or Desperate Housewives. But now, Mark Declan is taking on Dallas and its ladies in ABC's Good Christian Bells. Hey Mark, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I know you're in the middle of filming right now, so how has that been going for you? Oh, it, it's fantastic. This this group of people, from the creative team to, to my fellow actors, it's just, the, the crew, everybody, it's just been phenomenal. Everybody's really smart and funny and cool and, and real. I love coming to work, and, and I know that's sort of the diplomatic answer that everybody's supposed to give, but it's it's really the truth. Um, you know, this crew is just really together, and and uh, the material is great, and, and the, the process has been so collaborative, uh, which is such a rare gift for an actor. Um, so it, it's just been great. I'm, I'm thrilled. What episode are you guys on now? Because I know you've been filming for a while. So are you guys close to, you know, filming pretty close to the start date, or are you guys pretty far out, like in episode, you know, 10? Oh, or, no, we're, like, we're, we're, way, we're way on top of it. We're, we're way ahead of the whole game. In fact, it's, it's weird. I've never been in this situation before where, um, you know, where you're not under the gun. You know, usually, usually you're, you're just sort of it, – it's like you're, the waves are chasing you. You know, you're, you're, you're shooting an episode and you're looking over your shoulder because the viewers are only an episode or two behind you. And, uh, and that's just not the case now uh, with this. So it, it's cool. It, it means we get to relax a little more with it and we get, to really, um, we get to really create the world that we're creating without that sense of people looking over our shoulder. Uh, so we'll see if people will either respond to it or they won't, but I think, I think it makes it a more, uh, uh I think it makes it a, a world with more integrity. I think people, uh, people will really, it'll resonate for people. I do. Now GCB, Good Christian Bells, they're, they're calling it GCB, hasn't aired yet. Um, but what can you tell people? I, I mean, I look at it, I kind of see still Magnolias meets Sex in the City. What can you tell people about the show? Well, you know, I'll tell you that's a, that's pretty accurate. What what you just said is 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 not a bad uh, not a bad description of of what the show is. I think it I think it, it's that and more. Um, you know, when I first read it, uh, I, I think I sort of smugly got the script and thought, oh, I know what this is. It's it's Desperate Housewives in the South. You know, and and yeah. and then I read it and I thought, boy, there's there's more to it, and there's such a there's such a distinct voice here. And um, and you really hit on it with the Steel Magnolias because, of course, our writer is Bobby Harling, who wrote Steel Magnolias and who wrote uh, First Wives Club and and uh, and Soap Dish and, and movies like that. So he he has such a distinct voice and he knows that world so well and and so in such detail. And I think that really comes across. And um, but I think that there are a couple things people will be surprised by with our show. One is how funny it is. It's really, we're not making a soap here. We're making a comedy. And uh, it, it almost plays like a, like a half hour comedy that happens to be an hour long. Um, but the second thing people would be surprised by is in the midst of all that wackiness and, and over the topness, uh, we're really keeping everything really human. And I think people will be astonished by how much they, they, they begin to care about our characters. And, uh, and how emotionally invested they are in these people, even with, you know, with all of the hypocrisies and, and, uh, and craziness. Um, you know, and as far as my character, I, I'm, I'm having so much fun. He, he, Blake has turned out to be one of the most fun characters I've ever played. Uh, he, he, there's so many levels and so much complexity and secrets to this guy. And, um, and, and because we didn't really have a real template to work from, he's not a stereotype of anything. Um, I was able to really build this guy from scratch. And uh, which has been really fun. Um, and, and like I said earlier, the process has been so collaborative. You know, I can email Bobby and say, hey, what if Blake did this? And he'll say, hey, that's kind of a cool idea. Let's explore that. And uh, man, that's such a gift as an actor to have that kind of collaborative process. So um, uh, yeah, I think, I, I, think, I think there's not anything like it on TV right now. And uh, I think people will tune in for all sorts of reasons, but I think they'll all be pleasantly surprised by what they've tuned into.
Well, and this girl, Amanda, returns back home after being gone for so long. And she was like the bully, I guess, in high school. And she returns and now all the people that she bullied in high school now want to get back at her. I think the bottom line is we all, like, no matter where you grew up, at some point you, we all went to high school. And the, the bottom line, you know, high school just kind of sucks. I mean, I have, I have, I mean, we all have fond memories from high school, but we, you know, it's, it's tough. High school is brutal. And, uh, and I think the, the whole point of the show is Amanda thinks, I mean, she, yeah, she was mean. She was pretty awful in high school. And, um, but she's grown up. She moved away from home. She's, you know, life has given her a few knocks and she's sort of grown up and matured and become actually a, a nice human being. And, and, you know, high school seems to be in the past. So what really hits her in the face when she comes home is that all these, all these GCBs, all the, all those women that she was mean to, they kind of haven't ever moved on. They're they're still in that same town, and they're still in that high school clique, and that's what's really astonishing to Amanda is that oh my God, they haven't changed, and we're still basically you know even though we're all now like you know in our 30s, 40s, a couple people are even you know 50s, but we're still in high school, and you know, that's that's you know and and that's where a lot of the fun comes from. Is, is well, seeing, and girls, seeing girls can uh, girls are sometimes the worst when it comes to that whole cattiness of things and getting back at each other and holding grudges and and that whole thing. So I'm sure we're in for a whole lot of drama and cat fights. So <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of backstabbing, a lot of you know yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and you know, and I get to be uh, as Blake. I'm actually. Uh, in that within that world, I'm I'm sort of a leavening agent in a lot of ways because I'm not catty. I'm not one of the girls. I'm not you know. So I actually end up being someone that Amanda can really. I've been a friend of hers for years, and and I, I end up being one of the most trustworthy, you know, reliable people that she finds when she comes back to Dallas, uh, which is really fun. Which in the show I read your wife. Um, is not a fan of, so I'm sure that that creates a lot of problems in your marriage because you become friends with her, but yet your wife is one of those that doesn't like her, so it creates some problems there that you're oh, friends with yeah. her. Oh, yeah, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to give anything away, but the, yeah, there's an episode where that's sort of the whole thing is that dynamic of how my wife, uh, Cricket, is, is threatened because we have a great marriage. We, we're, 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 we're best friends. We love each other, and so for this outside friendship to come in, um, she's not threatened sexually by Amanda. It really is the fact that I'm friends with her. It really creates a sense of betrayal for her, for for my wife for Cricket. And uh, again, I don't want to I don't want to say a whole lot more because I don't want to give anything away from from an upcoming episode. But um, but absolutely, that dynamic is at play. Can you kind of talk more about the character? I know um, that I read that he you know runs the um, I think it was the clothing department for his wife's company and, you know, does all of that. And he definitely has a few secrets. Now, I read one of them, but I don't know if you're allowed to say it or not. Blake has a big secret right off the bat. And and we discover other secrets as well. Things sort of unfold in a really fun, kind of, really kind of wonderful way. Um, but but uh, I think if I say too much, then I might, I might spoil the surprise. So, uh, like I said, I'll play it a little close to the vest. Well, I am very excited for the show. I mean, like I said, I see billboards everywhere. You know, Kristen Chenoweth all over them. You got for been, Kristen Chenoweth, right? <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, watching the previews. I mean, I think I think it's great. The previews look hysterical, so I am very excited. Um, so remember that uh, GCB airs this Sunday on ABC at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so thank you, Mark, so much uh, for joining me at Ms. Hollywood. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I, I, it's great to talk to you. Thank you. You too. And uh, right foot forward, as my grandma used to say, and um, good luck with the show. I know I think it's going to be a major hit, and I hope that it has a long life to it. And please stay in touch with me and let me know, you know, what's going on. I'd love to have you back on. I would love to, and I will do that. And uh, as my grandmother used to say, from your mouth to God's ears. <laughs>